let's talk socks. So today we are going to be doing a tutorial on making a pair of socks. I'm going to be teaching you the way, what is that on my board? The way that I make socks and the way that I make socks is magic loop and using the shadow wrap heel. There are many ways to make a pair of socks. You can use nine inch circular needles, which are the super, super tiny circular needles. You can use double pointed needles. There's higher, higher flyers. You can do magic loop. There are many ways of making socks, but we're going to, I'm going to show you today magic loop because that is my preferred method and it's how I learn. I find it the easiest way. But before we get into any of the tutorial, there's a couple of things that I want to run around. First of all, sock construction. So this is a knitted sock. These are made cuff down. The cuff is where the ribbon is here. And that means we've started at the top where the cuff is and we've worked all the way down the sock. You can also make socks starting from the toe and working all the way up. You may have heard people talking about their favourite sock recipe. So what is a sock recipe? So a sock recipe is your preferred way of, of making socks that fit you. So every sock will have a cuff, every sock will have a heel and every sock will have a toe. But the differences come from how many stitches you cast on, how long you make the leg, the leg or the foot, what type of heel you use, whether you do a two by two or a one by one ribbon and that is what the sock recipe refers to. So my preferred sock recipe is a one by one rib, which is what I've got here, a 2.75 millimeter needle and 60 stitches. The standard woman's sock tends to be 64 stitches. If you look at any of the pattern socks, they will usually tell you to cast on 64 stitches. That's not every sock, but that is just the standardized cast on number for a woman's foot. For a man's foot, it tends to be 72 stitches. And needle-wise, it totally depends on your gauge and how tight you like your socks. I'm going to go for a generic number today when I show you how to do the tutorial. And I'm going to show you on 2.5 millimetre needles. I'm using the Knit Pro ones. And you're going to need a cable that's a minimum of 16 inches. So you can do magic loop. And we're also going to be casting on 64 stitches for our socks today. We're going to be starting from the cuff and we're going to do the ribbon. We're going to work down the leg and then we're going to do the heel. The heel we're doing is a short row heel. And the reason that I prefer that heel is that's the heel that fits me best. Once you've made your first pair of socks, go off and experiment. Go and look at all of the different heels. There are many. Go and look at all of the different toes. There are a million brilliant, fantastic YouTube tutorials that will show you different types of heel, different types of toe. You can do socks two at a time. So once you've made your first pair, go off and experiment. The heel flap and gusset is a really, really popular heel. It's like I say, it's not my preferred heel because it doesn't fit me so well, but lots of people prefer them, especially if you have a high instep then a heel flap and gusset might be for you. But the best way to learn how to knit socks is just to knit them, just to get on with it and knit them. And once you've knit your first pair, you can start making adjustments for your second pair. There is one more thing I want to talk about before we start, and that is second sock syndrome. So what is second sock syndrome? That is when you've been squirreling away, making your first sock and you're really happy with it and then you think, oh no, I've got to make the second and you just don't want to. I have my own method around second sock syndrome. Other people will tell you, cast on your second sock straight away, which works really well. Make them two at a time, then you avoid second sock syndrome altogether. But then it's not such a quick project if you make socks to it two at a time and that's why I don't like doing it. So what I tend to do is I'll make sock number one and then I'll leave it and I'll make another sock number one 
a different yarn, a different pattern, and then I'll leave that, and then I'll make another sock number one. And I'll probably get to the point where I've got about four single socks kicking around the house, waiting for partners. But you see, when it comes to making that second sock, it only feels like I've got one sock to knit again. So that works really well for me. But experiment. First things first, we need to get you making some socks. And you'll understand why so many people enjoy making socks, giving them as gifts, Christmas presents, birthday presents. Most knitters will have a pair of socks on the go at all times because they are a quick project. They're something you can take out with you. They are something you can work on when you want something mindless. It's just a super easy, super quick project. So... I'm going to stop rambling and we are going to get on to making socks. Right, so this is my yarn I'm going to be using. I'm going to be doing a contrast heel, but I don't need that yet. So we're just concentrating on this. I'm not going to be doing a contrast cuff. I like to do my cuffs in the same colour as the sock, mainly because I knit shorty socks a lot of the time or ankle socks. So that's the colour that I'm going to use. So I've got this gorgeous, bright pink, yellow sock yarn you need a yarn for socks that has nylon in it which will make them more durable so this is a 75 percent superwash merino and 25 percent nylon four ply yarn you can make dk weight socks but this isn't that tutorial this is a four ply yarn we've also got a, a pair or a set how do you say this? circular needles do you still call it a pair 2.5 millimeter circular needles and I've got all my notions in this bag. So first of all we are going to start by casting on 64 stitches. I'm not going to be talking you through how to cast on, how to do the knit stitch or any of those things. We're just going to be casting on 64 stitches. I'm going to assume that you know how to do that. So cast on 64 stitches, I'm going to do it this way. So what I like to do when I'm working with circular needles is I'll cast on 32, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Give myself some more yarn. Twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31 and 32. So I've got my first 32 stitches on here and that is going to be one half of my sock. So because I'm working magic loop, what I'll do at this point is I'll pull the needle that I'm working through all the way along so them stitches go onto the cable. Then I'll cast on my next 32 stitches onto that needle. The one that I've just been using. One, two, three. I'll try and stop that scratching sound. <laughs> Oops, done that one wrong. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, I 
you put that in there, it will stop scratching. There we go. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31 and 32 stitches. There we go. Right, so you've cast on, you are your 64 stitches. Fantastic. So just manoeuvre your stitches onto the needles. And at this point, you need to be really, really careful that you don't twist these stitches as we go to join in the round. So I like to have mine, if you can see that, all pointed inwards. All my stitches, the bottom of my stitches are all pointed inwards here. And that, I find, for me, works much better. I've got a really long tail here, so I'm just going to trim that down. Because if I don't, what's going to happen is I'm going to start knitting with that tail. I do it all the time. So we've got all our stitches facing the right way. And this is your working yarn. That's your tail yarn and that is your working yarn. So push all your stitches so they are facing down. And have the needle on top with your tail and working yarn. When you work in Magic Loop, you're always going to need to make sure your working yarn falls over the top of that needle. Because if you don't do that, you're going to get an extra stitch, just so it's out of the way. Okay, so pull your working yarn over the top, pull the needle with the working yarn all the way through, like this. The first round is always a little bit tricky. Making sure you've got them stitches the same way that needle comes through into the first stitch on that bottom needle. So you're working yarns on this needle and we're going to start knitting. So we are going to start off knit two, purl two all the way around. So your first one, so going across your first needle, give it a little tug to make sure it's tight enough, knit two. You want to make sure you're pulling that second stitch quite the yarn on the second stitch quite snugly to avoid a ladder. I don't tend to get ladders when I knit Magic Loop, but just make sure they're nice and snug. Not over tight, don't yank them, but just make sure they're pulled two. So knit two. Oops, my needle fell out. Purl two. It does feel a little bit weird on the first round, so don't worry about that. It's a bit tight, everything's a bit snug. Second round's much easier. So you're just going to knit two, purl two, all the way across that first needle. Oh, I do love this yarn. The reason I've not showed you the contrast colour yet is because I'm not sure what contrast colour I'm using. I've got a yellow which would work, but I kind of want to go a bit crazy with my contrast colour. We'll see when we get to the heel, I'm not sure yet. Sometimes it helps to knit a bit of the sock anyway before you decide on what your contrast colour should be. I do like black though. If I've got a rainbow type yarn, I love to put black with it. It's my favourite combination, but I can't do that for the tutorial because it's going to be nigh on impossible for you to see it if I use black yarn. So that's why I had a yellow in mind. I'm just coming up 
to the end of the first needle Sorry if you can hear any background noise outside. It's really warm today. The window is wide open and there's lots of children playing outside. Right, so that is right, oops, right the way across my first needle. Give myself some more yarn. So I'm going to turn my needles over pull the stitches onto the other needle so they're the stitches that I just worked on on the back and I pulled the needle through and the next lot of stitches for needle two I'm just pulling up now remember what I said <clears throat> about making sure your yarn is over the top of the needle that you're using. If it's underneath, what's going to happen when you start knitting is you're going to create another stitch like a yarn over onto that needle. Can you see? So if that yarn is not pulled over the top, if you just let it dangle down the middle, when you start knitting, it's going to wrap around that cable and it's going to create another stitch there. <clears throat> Excuse me. So you always need to make sure your yarn is over the top of that cable. And we're just going to go across needle two, just like we did needle one, and we are going to knit two, purl two, all the way across. So knit two. Just make sure you're pulling that yarn snug on your first couple of stitches. And just go all the way across. When you knit in magic loop, needle one will always be the top of your sock and needle two will always be the back of your sock, so the, f the underside of your foot. Have I got a pearl? Yeah. Um, so you work needle two is where you'll put your heel and needle one, obviously, like I say, will be the top of your foot. It's always good to keep that in mind. When I first was learning how to knit socks, I remember looking on the internet, trying to, I just wanted someone to tell me exactly what to do. And there was a lot of videos about patterns and one thing and another. And I found it really difficult to understand what all the sock terminology meant, like sock recipe and all those kind of things, which is the reason I wanted to do this video, just to talk you through the things that I found difficult to find out in the beginning. When you get to your last stitch, just pull your, your yarn tail snug. Right, so we've gone across both needles. You're going to notice here, let me just pull this one on so I can show you properly. Can you see you've got this line here? Do not worry about this. This happens on your first round. Once you get round to round two, this will pull in and you won't have that huge gap at all. So don't panic if you've got this line thinking, oh my God, I've done something wrong. My stitches aren't joined properly. They are joined properly. That will tighten up as we go. So you have done your first round. You have cast on your first pair of socks. How exciting. 
I'm going to do another couple of rounds with you. Hey, up my dog's come along. She wants to join in the video. So I'm going to do another couple of rounds with you. And then I'm going to leave you to do the cuff on your own. So we're going to be working on one more thing before we carry on. Where you've got your yarn tail is always going to be the start of the round. So if your yarn tail is on the right, that means you're back at the start of the round. But do put a stitch marker on. It's going to become really helpful to have a stitch marker on. Once you get to the point where you've put heel in, you can tell where the start of the round is much easier. But if you've not got your stitch marker on yet, if your tail is on the right hand side, you're back to the start of the round. If your tail's on this side, you're halfway around the round. So you've got your needles like this. We're going to be pulling out the needle that has the working yarn attached to it. Hook the yarn over the top of the needle as we've been doing. Pull the needle through. And just make sure the stitches on that first needle are moved up. And we begin knit two, purl two again. Oops, tangled up in my yarn tail there. So knit two. Pull them stitches snug on the first two stitches. And we just go back across. And this is basically all sock knitting is. You're just going backwards, well not backwards at all, <laughs> all the way round and round and round. And you don't, once you've got your first round out of the way of the cuff, you don't really have to concentrate on knit, poo, knit two purl two either, because it's really easy to see what you're on. I haven't hit the stitch properly there, that's better. Socks are an amazing project to have on the go. They really are. Oh, the dog's barking outside. Let me just go and get the dog in. I'm back. She likes to bark at the next door neighbour's dog quite a lot. And we have done the first need for the first needle of the second round. We're going to turn the work over or the needles over. I do that automatically. I'll show you that properly again. <laughs> turn it over, pull the needle out that you've just been working on, and push the other needle in. So you see my yarn tail is at this side now. And that means I'm only halfway through the round. Make sure that working yarn is over the top of that needle. And we're going to pull that needle through and begin working on needle two. So just knit two, purl two, all the way across again. On to needle two. Socks sound so much more scary than they actually are. Heels, a heel used to terrify me, absolutely terrify me. But the, in all honesty, once you get used to, to, to um, knitting them, they take about 40 minutes and it's really not difficult. It's just, it's the thought of it that's difficult. And it's like anything with knitting, the thought of it always sounds worse than what it actually is. So just don't be put off by thinking, oh, we've got, we're going to get to a heel soon. I'm going to talk you through every step of the way. 
and it's not difficult, I promise. If I can do it, you can do it. So we're just coming up to the end of needle two. No, we're not, I'm about halfway through. Oh, I do like this yarn. Danny dyed this for me. It had some in the shop and I really liked it. And in fact, it wasn't this one. My friend Caroline bought it for me. Danny dyed it for the shop and I really liked it. And my friend Caroline bought it for me. So we've come to the end of needle two. So turn the needles over. And can you see now our yarn tail is back on the right hand side so we know we've finished the round and that weird thing has already nearly disappeared between the, between the needles. Can you see? So that will tighten up now. So we are going to do one more round together. So that's needle two that we've just finished on. So needle one, push all your stitches back on. Pull your working yarn over the top of that back needle. Your yarn tail just stays dangling, don't worry about that. Working yarn over the top of the back needle. Pull that needle through and begin working again. Knit two, purl two, all the way across this first needle. And that's it, you've cast on your first pair of socks. It's not as scary as it as you think, is it really? I did tell you that. And as we're only in the very early of September, there's plenty of socks you can get knitting for gifts for Christmas or birthdays. And you will adjust, once you've made your first pair, you'll adjust it as you go. We're going to talk about measurements when we get to the foot. I'm not going to talk about that yet. At the moment, we're just, we're just concentrating on casting on. That's all we're doing. And we're just concentrating on the cuff. That's it. One step at a time. Not worrying about a toe or anything else yet. We're on the cuff, so we're concentrating on the cuff. And we're just coming up to the end of needle one. There we go. Turn it over. Yarn tail's now on this side. Pull the cable so needle two has stitches on. That working yarn over the top of that back needle. And pull out that needle and we begin working across needle two. So knit two, purl two, all the way across needle two. My first pair of socks I made didn't even fit me. <laughs> I still have them, I still love them because they were my first pair of socks and I didn't realise that I was supposed to be using yarn that had nylon in, so I used cotton. So once you've got, you know, once you've managed to squeeze your foot into the sock, the cotton just stretches and they fall off anyway. They're absolutely unwearable but I keep them because they are my first pair of socks. They are on my Instagram actually. Um, they've got a purple cuff on them and I didn't have a clue what I was doing when I knit those and it actually put me off socks for a while because I just thought oh I don't know how people do it they don't even fit they don't stay on your feet and I didn't realise it was my own fault and there's nothing nicer 
than wearing a pair of hand knit socks. There really isn't. I'm always knitting socks. I've got too many pairs now. I've started on socks for Danny now. Right, coming up to the end of needle two. There we go. Turn it over. And there you have, can you see the rib starting to take shape? This can you see that bit there that I told you would disappear has disappeared and you can see that you are knitting completely in the round and you have cast on your cuff. So huge, huge well done. Now, how many rounds do you do for the cuff? That is totally, utterly personal preference. I like 10 rounds. Actually, I prefer 12 rounds. If I'm being totally honest, I like 12 rounds for the cuff. But once I get to 10 rounds, I always think, oh, that'll do. So I will always do 10 rounds, even though I prefer 12. Some people like a really big cuff and maybe have 15, 20 rounds for the cuff. It's totally up to you. So at this point, your first decision to make is how many rounds do you prefer for your cuff? I wouldn't go less than 10, but you, you decide on how many rounds you want your cuff. And I'll meet you back here when you finish that. I'm going to go ahead and knit 10 rounds, but if you want to knit 10, 12, 15, feel free. I wouldn't knit any more than 20. That's a really deep cuff. <laughs> but you decide what you want to do. So first decision you've got to make, decide how many rounds. And we'll meet you back here when you've done your cuff. Right, so have you done your rib? I did say to you earlier... That I get bored after 10 rounds. That's exactly what I've done. I've done 10 rounds. So this is what your cuff should be looking like. And this is the start of your sock. So now we are going to get into knitting the leg of the sock. Now, again, this is going to be personal preference to how long you want your leg. I'm going to knit mine 20 rounds because I tend to knit ankle socks. They're the length that I like. But you can knit your leg for as long as you want. Three inches is a really good size. Some people prefer four inches. But just knit away. I'd probably recommend, if you don't like ankle socks, maybe 40 rounds and see what you think to that length. But I'm going to knit 20. So... We're going to put all the stitches back onto needle one. Make sure that yarn is hooked over the needle. And for this, we are just going to knit. That's all we're going to do. And this is where you'll find the joy in sock knitting because it's just small circumference knitting. And you can just zone out. So you're just going to knit across needle one and then needle two. And you're going to carry on doing that all the way around until you've got the leg as long as you like it. So we're just going to carry on. No more knits and pearls, just knit. And this is the fun bit. So I hope you're all enjoying this tutorial. I'm going to turn the work over. Slide the stitches back on. Like I say, if you're wanting to knit ankle socks like mine, then I would recommend 20 rounds. If I was doing a shorty sock, I'd probably only knit 10 rounds in between the cuff and the heel. But I like mine just slightly longer than that. So it's 20 rounds for me. 
but you choose what you want to do. Yeah, just knitting now, nothing more. This is a good place to put a stitch marker in to mark the start and end of the round, if you would like to do that. Coming up to the end of my second needle now. And that's that. That's the first round of the leg done. So if you want to put a stitch marker in, just clip a stitch marker onto this side at this point. Make it easier if that's what you need to do. But yeah, and that's all we're going to be doing now. You're just going to be knitting round and round for however many rounds you want to do. So I'm going to let you go ahead and do that. Like I say, if you want an ankle sock, then 20 rounds is great. If you want a shorty sock, 10 rounds is great. If you want it a bit longer, you can maybe knit 40 rounds, 50 rounds. The choice is up to you. But just continue now and just go round and round. And that is the end of part one. So in part two, we are going to be putting the heel in. Do not be nervous. It's really easy. So don't be worrying about it. So I'm going to let you go ahead now and knit the leg. And I will see you in the next video for part two. And we'll be putting in the heel. The heel that we're using is a short row heel. It's called the shadow wrap heel. And like I said to you before, it's my favourite. So I'll see you in part two.